Hi friends, in this topic we will learn about neglected ankle fractures. Ankle fractures as we have understood is a very very common injury and hence neglect becomes more commoner. Why is that? Because many a times the patients might feel that he had a very simple uh, twisting injury and he might not seek medical attention for a significant period of time thinking it may be some sprain and then after a few weeks when the pain does not come down he might seek medical attention by which time it would already be considered as a neglected ankle injury. But what is the definition of neglect? Even if we search the literature we cannot come to a proper definition of what time duration can be considered post which we can label it as neglect whether it is 2 weeks, 3 weeks, 6 weeks. Now different publications give different case scenarios and there is no common definition to which we can fall back upon. Also what exactly is a neglect? Now here is a gentleman who sustained a ankle fracture who sought medical attention and he was told that it requires surgical intervention. But he went to an alternative medicine specialist who put on splints and massage and after 6 months presented back to the first surgeon seeking for treatment. In this case as we can see the patient did neglect what was told on day 1 by the primary surgeon but he took a medical help and advice from an alternative medicine doctor. Whereas in this case, this is a young lady who had a twisting injury at her house. She sought medical attention immediately. She was told there is nothing major to be bothered of and given an ankle binder and asked to walk about. And six weeks later, the surgeon realized that it was a syndesmotic ankle injury to begin with and hence now the patient has a so called neglected but the neglect might have been the surgeon's understanding of the injury and maybe better investigations or better assessment of the initial injury might have helped this patient. So what is the issue? What happens when the patient neglects or appropriate treatment is not given to ankle fractures? What we need to understand is even when there is a minimal amount of shift of talus as minimal as 1 millimeter, it amounts to nearly 40% reduction in the tibiotalar contact area. Now this changes the biomechanics of the joint and there will be abnormal loading on the joint. So this causes increased stress on the articular cartilage leading on to osteoarthrosis of the joint. As we can see in the picture there is very very minimal tilt of the talus but this will easily progress to a degenerated joint in few years. So any malunion of the fibula following a malleolar fracture completely changes the way the joint is loaded. It changes the biomechanics. Hence, we need to understand that we have to reconstruct the length of the fibula and get the alignment back, restore it to as normal as possible so that further progression of degeneration is prevented and this has been proved to reduce the chances of secondary arthritis even when done as late as 7 years after the injury. Now ankle cartilage unlike other joints of the body like hip or a knee has a significant resilience to prevent degeneration, prevent secondary osteoarthrosis and hence it is told that secondary reconstruction could be undertaken in almost all cases when already the secondary changes is not been seen in the joint and this indirectly helps because it prevents further progression or further worsening of the degeneration.
The most common malunion is shortening especially of the lateral malleoli and external rotation of the distal fibula. So what happens is that with this there is a widening of the ankle mortis. Due to this there will be a lateral tilt of the talus and this can lead to secondary flat foot. Overall on the long run all of these combined will lead to a degenerative arthritis of the ankle joint. So once there is a neglect it auto automatically means there is malunion in most cases. In few cases it may be non-union but this means that the biomechanics has changed. So poor outcomes of the joint on the long run and hence there is a need for early surgical intervention and reconstruction and restoration of the anatomy to as near as possible. So what are the symptoms that the patient will have when they present with this problem? We can see that in almost all cases it is the pain and difficulty in bearing weight with which the patient seeks medical consultation. So there may be some amount of activity restriction which is very important in most of the patients in our Indian context because they may be walking bare feet in the fields or even, uh, even, uh, even the routine work that they are doing it will restrict the activities and cosmetic changes although could be seen most patients are not bothered with that unless it restricts activity or unless it causes pain the patient will not present asking for uh, medical attention. So, 